Thanks, Gary. So, so you basically, like, I talk a lot. That's what you're saying. So I'm, I'm also disruptive dean on Twitter, um, and you'll probably find out why. So first off, everyone says that 5G is going to be transformative, that it's going to transform industries. What they don't tell you, and most of them actually don't realize, is the first industry that, that's going to get uh, transformed by 5G. Actually, ask people here, which is the first industry that's going to get transformed by 5G? Anyone? No, telecoms. The, uh, and this is the irony of 5G is it's not going to transform other stuff first. It's going to transform everyone here first. And one of the ways it's going to do it is by allowing new business models of operator, new wholesale players. Essentially, there's an awful lot of new telcos that are going to get enabled by, let's call it the 5G era rather than 5G technology. So imagine a, uh, okay, imagine a hotel car park in five, ten years' time. Let's say you're optimistic. You've got a self-driving car and it's yours rather than a rented one from Uber. Now, we can argue about the timelines on self autonomous vehicles, but let's run with it. And um, it drops you at reception, goes and parks itself in the underground car park, and the next morning, you're like, okay, come and meet me. But the car has to have connectivity, and it's in an underground car park. Whose job is it to provide wireless coverage in the car park two or three stories underground. Is it your network operator? Is it the connectivity provider for the vehicle? Is it the hotel pro the, that's supposed to put coverage in the car park? Is it going to be 4G, 5G, or the, still the 3G distributed antenna they had from 15 years ago that they haven't upgraded? Um, if it's going to be Wi-Fi, how's the car going to connect to it? So basically, the problem is that no one at the moment takes responsibility because no one wants to pay an up for upgrade, installing and upgrading connectivity everywhere. This room, if we had a 5G network outside that was any, you know, one of these gigabit a second, let's say millisecond latency, we would not have access in here because it won't go through the wall and the existing in-building system here won't be capable of dealing with either the frequencies or the reliability requirements or the massive multi-antenna MIMO. So the question is, who will upgrade it? Who will pay for it? And is it going to be on just one operator or all of them? So you know, one of these alleged magical um, 5G augmented reality headsets, let's ignore the fact they're all Wi-Fi based for now, um, you don't even know necessarily what operator, what network it needs to connect to. So if you want to do your 5G gaming in here in a few years' time, again, whose responsibility? And arguably, it's Hilton's responsibility. And what this would imply is a wholesale network which would allow other operators to roam onto or interconnect with the network in here. And this is just one of a set of problems of coverage and performance for mobile networks in the, well, 4G and future 5G eras. So indoor of all sorts is going to be a huge issue. Uh, islands and mountains, to topologically challenged places where, again, the short range of some connectivity and also the thin population density means that the economics are challenging for a lot of the service providers to build out. Along road and rail sides, um, are you really going to have millimeter wave antennas you know, every 400 meters down a highway? Probably not. You're certainly not going to have four sets of them, one for each of the networks. Um, industrial premises, dense metropolitan areas where it's really difficult to get new cell sites uh, for planning permission route, and then also perhaps some rural areas as well. And so in all of these, the economics are challenging, the deployment practicalities are challenging, um, and the question is whether you're going to be able to give coverage for all of the networks, not just one or two. And one of the ways of doing this is by wholesale. And so what, what I'm seeing at the moment is there's a whole set of new types of service provider emerging in mobile space, um, partly catalyzed by the availability of new spectrum. Um, so in the US, or mainland US, there's um, the CBRS uh, spectrum band, which is available for local licensing or sort of not quite Wi-Fi-like unlicensed use, but 
close to it. Um, and that's going to start allowing the creation of localized private cellular networks for indoors or for factories or perhaps for fixed wireless access or lots of other use cases. And there's something similar being seen. You know, industrial sites in Germany can get their own spectrum. The UK, where I'm from, has three or four different spectrum bands that are being opened up for various sorts of local licensing. Japan, Malaysia, France... Sweden, Netherlands, they're all slightly different, but they're all going to allow companies uh, and service providers to start building out new networks. Now, one of the things which gets a lot of focus is private cellular. Um, but actually, from what this I'm, I'm talking about here is the wholesale model, neutral host, where one company acquires spectrum perhaps or builds out small cells on someone else's spectrum uh, based on a commercial agreement and then offers that on a wholesale basis to multiple low, uh, multiple network operators to sort of either roam onto or interconnect and you also can find microcellular for communities and cities perhaps as well um, and so neutral host is where you have a wholesale model for cellular capacity. It can be pr uh, provided based on a separate tranche of spectrum owned and operated locally or in some cases nationally. There's a company called Dense Air, for example, that's got spectrum in five or six countries and they want to offer a wholesale only service to other MNOs. Um, it could be uh, provided by an enterprise, which also like a, a hotel, which then he has network for its own use, and it's off, open to third parties, the normal carriers, and perhaps some specialist ones for smart buildings or um, gaming, perhaps, or mobile operator or industrial use cases. You're also going to find tower companies and others start to offer small cells as a service or indoor coverage as a service for multiple operators, and there's a few different technical architectures there. What I'm not including here is a few other things which are interesting, but uh, off-topic off here, around government-run national wholesale networks, which are cropping up, are cropping up in a few uh, countries, uh, or where the carriers themselves um, work together for a network sharing arrangement, which again is occurring in a few territories. That's interesting, but I wouldn't call that a neutral host, although it's sort of an inch, it's a part of the same um, uh, general sphere of new business models to provide better coverage, especially for 5G, where the economics and, and technical, uh, technical practicalities are challenging. And so my last slide here is the number of stakeholders in this is going to proliferate. And this is why I say that the um, 5G era is going to be transformative, because there's an awful lot of companies that essentially will be telcos that don't look like telcos today. So maybe data center companies, maybe uh, industry specialists like a Siemens or an ABB or a Honeywell. Um, there's the existing distributed antenna providers uh, for buildings such as this. Um, and they're starting to move towards services. Um, venue owners themselves, property companies, are all looking at offering wholesale connectivity for wireless as well as fibre uh, in their new developments. Um, companies that own street furniture, so uh, bus shelters, uh, lampposts, outdoor advertising. Um, I'm speaking to local authorities in some markets that were saying, well, actually, can we provide a wholesale connectivity solution in the dense urban areas Perhaps we own the light poles and we own the rights of way and the property rights. So I think that there's going to be a lot of um, new models to who owns Spectrum, who owns mobile networks, and also what the wholesale propositions are. So this term neutral host, um, it's already existed for some of the indoor uh, environments in the past, but to be honest, that's more been a shared indoor wireless system and each carrier has to, have to bring their own uh, cell tower or signal source to attach to it. This is actually going to go sometimes right the way down to the radio. And particularly if you want to do indoor network slicing and ultra-reliable communications, can you rely on someone else's sort of fiber and random antenna in the ceiling? Possibly not. So there's going to have to be a lot more visibility end-to-end. -end. So I'll leave it there in case anyone's got any other questions. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Um, 
the, well, there's, there's a couple. There's going to be lots of different technical ways of doing it. One is going to be various forms of network sharing, and you get into sort of acronyms like Moran and Mocken for do you share a core network or is it core to core interconnection or is it roaming? Um, it's going to vary depending on whether it's a bus shelter or a large hotel. Um, do you need to support revenue? In which direction? You will probably, obviously, um, the operators are not going to want to do deals with 30,000 different bus shelter owners around around the country. So you, there's, then, there's likely to be some sort of aggregation layer over that. There will be Bus Shelter Mobile Inc., which comes up and say we've got 30,000 properties or, or the equivalent. Apparently, my time is up. Um, might be able to sneak in one extra question. If not, I'm around afterwards. <laughs>